Hey guys, it's Ruben here from the e-commerce accountant. Today I want to talk about choosing the right entity structure. Now this is a question that we get um, nearly every single day with new clients or existing clients. What structure should I be in? Now before I get into this, it's very important to understand that this is something that I recommend looking at um, at, the, at the beginning of your journey. So rather than um, waiting until you have figured out um, if the business is working or or waiting until it's, it's turning over millions, um, it's very important to look at this at the start of your journey. Um, now, it doesn't mean that the structure can't evolve either. Down the track, you may be changing from a sole trader to a company or a company to a family trust or adding other entities um, as your business grows and scales. But it's important to just always keep in mind that um, the structure will be, uh, could be changing, and it's important to change it to get the maximum benefit for tax minimization purposes, as well as uh, asset protection, and then further on if you're selling the business or uh, you know passing it on to uh, another person or whatever it may be. Now, let's start off with um, how you should decide on your entity structure. Now, it's very important to understand that um, not everyone will have the same structure. Just because Bill or Bob down the road have a company or, or, your, or one of your friends have a trust, it doesn't mean that that's the right structure for you. What you need to do is create a structure based on your own personal goals um, and your business goals, your business circumstances as well as your per personal circumstances. So what I mean by that is you know, your family structure, your assets, um, what what the goals are for the business? Are you going to try and sell down the track? Um, uh, are you going to have employees? Are you going to go global? There are so many different uh, uh, variants and variables that we need to consider before before just saying, okay, you're going to be in a company. And the last bit of obviously is your risk profile. Um, it's very important. This is something that a lot of people don't look at because they don't um, they don't look at structuring correctly from the start, which is the risk profile. Are you going to be okay if the business gets sued? If the business goes under, what assets are you losing? Um, what's your risk for insurance purposes? What's your risk for liabilities, getting into legal, legal litigation? All of these um, issues should be considered before choosing a structure. Now, if I go back to the goal section, um, it's very important um, to understand that just because you have a company, it doesn't mean it's going to align with your goals. For example, if if one of your goals is to um, not so much just continuously grow the business and retain the profits in the business, um, and you just want to rip out all of the money, and then in the end, you're going to sell the business and try and get the best tax, tax outcome, then a trust may be the best option for you. Now, of course, we have to go into a little bit further in terms of your family um, family details, um, you know, your mums and dads, your brothers and sisters, who we can utilise for tax minimisation, but that's a simple, simple aspect. Now, another goal may be um, for you to grow the business and bring in investors, and other investors may be able to um, you know, purchase shares within your business to help you with additional capital. So that way you may need a different type of structure, whether that be a company, whether that be a unit trust, or whether it be some type of partnership of trust itself that's something that um, you know your accountant or, or your whoever your advisor is can advise you on at the time of structuring your entity now on to your personal and business circumstances it's also important to understand your personal goals and align the structure with those goals as well as well as as looking at how much you need personally to live. Um, you know, everyone has a different answer. Someone might say, I need $50,000 after tax to live, and some, uh, someone else might say, I need $200,000 to live after tax. So your personal circumstances. You always will have to look at, you know, whether you own a house, whether you own investments and shares, who is the, um, you know, who's taking on that risk on a personal level. And that's where you may need to structure it correctly to have different directors in one entity, and you might have a different director in, in another entity, one may hold the assets, the other one may be the trading entity, one may hold the IP and so on and so on. There's so many different variants here and that's why it's important to get it right from the start. And now your business circumstances. Now why I've put this in is because businesses always don't always have the same 
um, goals. And, and they don't always have the same structures. Some people might just be a mum and dad. So some business might just be a mum and dad um, business where, you know, there's just them two. It's just going to be family. They'll just grow it as uh, um, year on year without having to get any investors or thinking about selling or whatever it may be. And that's probably a good way for them to you know, jump into some type of family trust. Um, and, and then you, again, you'll have others that are looking to receive investors and so forth. Now, what you need to do is basically sit down with your accountant or your advisor, legal advisor, whoever it may be, and join all of this out. And then that way you can get a good understanding of what you need to do and what structure you need to do. The important thing is, and this is where a lot of people get caught, especially in the e-commerce game, is that if you start off as a sole trader and then suddenly you increase, you start increasing your um, revenue and profit, you start increasing the assets within your business and it's just going up rapidly. For example, we've had a client who's gone in three years, they went from basically nothing all the way up to 15 million in revenue um, and now that without the proper structuring at the start, they would have been, there would have been some issues in terms of capital gains tax, um, there may have been issues with um, you know restructuring and so forth. So you know, it could cost you more down the track. So if you get it right at the start, then um, it will save you a lot of money. Now, there are some certain considerations and, and tax concessions where you are allowed to restructure from, let's say, a, a sole trader to a company or a company to a trust, and there aren't any tax uh, exemption, uh, aren't any tax liabilities there or capital gains tax, but you have to talk to your accountant to make sure that you pass it in the first instance. Don't just go changing from a sole trader to a trust, a sole trader to a company, because you could end up with a big, big tax bill. Now, if I scroll down, um, what we do with our clients is we basically provide them with an entity structure report. Now, this one here is for a company structure, and I've just dummied this up. However, this is for Mr. Shopify. And what we do is we go, we go through all of their personal circumstances, who they're investing with, um, you know, their family structures, we go through any risk profiles and, over, and most importantly, their goals. And in here, we will create an actual recommendation report um, based on their current situation, where they want to move forward, everything that we've spoken about and give them a really detailed explanation of what they need to do in terms of a structure. Um, we'll, we'll jot out all of the ins and outs on on the you know the the liabilities that they may be the the directors duties all of those sort of aspects that you need to know and then at the bottom here we'll just put a bit of a diagram of how this will operate so this one here is just a simple company um, each company has a shareholder um, which are family family trust because we have several different shareholders involved um, we've put in the features of the company and then here um, this one here we assume that they're going to own a property. This one is going to be a commercial property that they're holding within a trust. Um, they could have held this, they, this could be held in a SMSF if they wanted to. But in this case, we've got, we've got a good example of holding the asset in, in uh, another trust to separate risk. We have different um, risk takers and asset holders. So, you know, one, the, the dad could be the director of the trading company and the mum could be the director of the trustee company for the, the trust. But um, it's very, very detailed and tailored. So before you go and enter or start up a trust, a company or whatever it may be, please, please seek advice because it will save you thousands. A little bit of an investment at the start will save you thousands and thousands down the road. If you have any questions, feel free to send us a message or jump on to www.ecommerceaccountant.com.au. Thanks, guys.